All right, so in the next few videos, we're going to talk about uh, rules for manipulating exponents. Uh, I'm throwing up a reference here to, uh, to a blog I like to read sometimes, uh, Math with Bad Drawings. It's not a bad little blog. Uh, but he has a really great post from a year or two ago um, titled The Exponential Bait and Switch. Um, if you search Google on this title, you'll find the blog. Um, it's good reading. And it's, uh, it's interesting because it points out something um, that's, I think, kind of uh, fundamental to, to a lot of mathematics and, and development of mathematics, which is, you know, when you're starting with exponents, how did you first learn exponents, right? Um, think way back. Um, actually, think all the way back to, like, multiplication, right? You might have first learned that, oh, multiplication is a repeated addition. And then you learn, oh, it's not quite so simple, because what if the numbers you're multiplying you know, are not whole numbers. What if, what if one of them is negative? What if one of them is a fraction? What if you're multiplying by the square root of two? How do you make sense of that, right? And the same thing happens with exponents, right? Somebody says, oh, exponents are, are repeated multiplication, right? So, so they say, well, you know, a, a cubed just means, you know, a times a times a, right? And a to the four, just means a times a times a times a. And so it stands to reason that, all right, you want to do a cubed times a to the 4. Well, that's a times a times a times a times a times a times a. And now basic algebraic properties of real numbers take hold, right? We know that multiplication is, is associative. These brackets are, are somehow unnecessary, um, right? And commutative, I can, you know, a, a cubed times a to the 4 is the same as a, four, a to the 4 times a cubed, right? I can, I mean, I'm just multiplying by a. The order in which I multiply by a doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how many times did I multiply by a? And how many times did I multiply by a? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, right? a to the seven. Right? And so then you generalize this, and you say, okay, well, in general, right? Um, if I wanted to do, you know, a to the m times a to the n, that should be a to the m plus n. Similar thinking leads to a rule for division, right? If I, if I did a cubed divide by a4, right, I had 3 in the numerator, 4 in the denominator, I would start canceling off common factors until I had just one left in the bottom. Um, and, and so you kind of, you know, it's however many you had on top minus however many you had on the bottom. And so... Well, that gets you to this rule, right? You subtract the exponents. Um, but then, of course, that, that leads you to, uh, to a possibility, right? If, if I was doing a, a cube divided by a to the 4, right? I've got more a's on the bottom than I do on the top. This might be negative. So then you say, oh, what, what if I have a negative exponent, right? What if I have, like, a to the minus n? Uh, well, there's a simple rule for that, too, right? Negative exponents are just reciprocals. Right? And so you sort of, you start with this idea that exponentiation is repeated multiplication. Um, and it leads you to these rules. And then eventually you say, actually, the rules are all that matters, right? You should probably remember where it came from. But ultimately, it's the rules that matter, right? And you say, well, exponents are just the things that follow these rules. And, and then that lets you, to, lets you extend things to scenarios where maybe, maybe this exponent is not an integer. Maybe it's a real number, right? Maybe it's a fraction, right? Maybe we're working with our favorite base, right? E. We might be doing that. So we're going we're gonna to be looking at situations where maybe the, the base and the exponent are, are real numbers. They might be irrational numbers. We still need to make sense of this. And you make sense of it through the properties, right, through the rules. Um, there's one that I've missed, right, which is, well, there's a couple, but another one is that if I had 
a to the m, and I was going to raise it to a further power, n. In this case, you multiply the exponents. And I guess that comes down to the whole, you know, multiplication is repeated addition, right? Because this means I multiply a to the m by itself n times. I apply this rule, which is that I should add m to itself n times, which really means I should multiply m by n. Uh, right, so you can you can kind of put all those together. Uh, there's another one that comes up, <coughs> maybe less often for calculus, but I, I suppose it still comes up. Um, you might be dealing with cases where um, you have either a product or a quotient that you want to raise to a power. And in this case, you can distribute the exponent to both terms, right? a to the n over b to the n, OK? Um, those rules work. Those rules are highly dependent on the fact that the order of multiplication doesn't matter for real numbers, right? Because on this side, you're doing a times b times a times b times a times b times a times b times a times b. On that side, you're doing a times a times a times a times a, and then b times b times b times b, right? You, you had to move all the a's to the beginning and all the b's to the end, right? You had to rearrange. Um, if you were doing another course, let's say like linear algebra, where you're dealing with, say, uh, matrices, where the order of multiplication does matter, you've got to be careful about these things. But we're doing calculus. We're working with real numbers, so it's OK. We have these rules. They work. All right. Um, so we can play with those. Um, probably the last one to point out is, is fractional exponents, right? What, um, the other one is, is to note that uh, if I had a to, say, the 1 over n, right, that means the same thing as the nth root of a, right? And, and that kind of, you know, in a way that makes sense. Um, kind of thinking about this rule, thinking about that rule, that the nth root of a should be the thing that if you multiply you know, it by itself n times, or if you do nth root of a times nth root of a n times, I should end up with a, right? But if I do a to the 1 over n times 1 over n times 1 over n, right, n of those, right, I should get, if I add 1 over n, n times, I get 1. I get back a. It makes sense, right? And the last one is if I have a rational exponent, so not just something where the numerator is 1, but a general rational exponent, uh, you can write this as either you do a to the m, and then you take the nth root, or you could take the nth root and then raise it to the power m, and you'll get the same result either way. Okay? Those are the basic rules for exponents. Um, we'll look at some examples in the next video.